Welcome to Simply Fresh Food. Today we're going to be making butternut squash mac and cheese. Mmm, yummy. We're also going to be making French style green beans and an endive and radicchio salad with honeyed walnut. We're also going to add as our dessert a caramel apple bread. Let's get started. All right, now to let to get started on our caramel apple bread. We have quite a few ingredients that go into it, but I tell you, it's worth every ingredient. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to add our butter to the mixer. Let me just get in here. And this is, believe it or not, two sticks of butter. All right, so we have that. And we are going to add our sugar. And let's cream that. Now you want that to go for a while so that they are soft and creamy, but you're gonna have to stop your mixer every so often just to push everything down. Screaming nicely. All right, and I'm gonna stop that just for a moment so that we can see what's happening here. This is lemon juice. And to the lemon juice, and this is a little different than uh, some of your other um, uh, methods of baking uh, bread, we're actually gonna add our baking soda to the lemon juice. Now, you see how it foams up? That is normal. It's supposed to foam up. Yep. But I'm going to go ahead and stir it because I want the baking soda to dissolve right here. All right, and I'm going to start adding ingredients to the creamed butter and sugar. There's our lemon juice, the vanilla, and remember every so often you have to go in and make sure everything's getting incorporated. Let's pull that down just for a moment. Very soft and creamy this is. But we want to make sure everything's getting mixed in there. There we are. And this is a great, great fall bread to have. I mean, you can have it any time of the year, but the fall is especially wonderful. Let's get that going again. There we are. Going to add our eggs now, one at a time. We have our cinnamon, that's for our crumb mixture. We have our salt and our flour. Apples at the end. All right, that is just fabulous. I'm now going to add the salt and the flour. I've just put them in the same dish, but it doesn't really matter. And we're going to continue to gradually add in the flour until everything is incorporated. Now as this thickens, you're going to want to change from your whisk to a different blade. And I think I'm gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna drop my mixer down. Gonna take off my whisk. Let's get that, up. there we are. We're gonna take everything off of that whisk. There we are. 
Don't want to lose any of that yummy bread. And while I have that down, I'm going to go ahead and grab the rest of the flour from around the side and scoop around the bowl. And I'm going to add my paddle. There we are. Raise the bowl back up and continue. It's going to get all nice and thick on us. Are done with the flour. Fabulous. And there we have it. We are done with that. So we're going to let that down. Loosen up our paddle. And bring everything over to the board. Let's take our batter off of the mixer. there. And what we're going to do is, because we're going to mix the apples right into the batter, I'm just going to move this out of the way. And that way I can begin to cut the apples. All right. And remember, I don't throw anything away. So in a different recipe, I used half a red apple and half a green. So here we are. Recycle. So now you can peel the apple. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to peel it. And this is just an easy way to peel it. You have a peeler already. There we are. Peel the red. And you're going to need uh, maybe about, maybe about um, two cups of apple for this recipe. And it's absolutely delicious. And yes, I did make it last week. It was fabulous. All right, so we're going to get this peeled up. Then we're going to chop up the um, apple. And I have another apple just to make sure we're getting in our full two cups. There we are. And now you can leave these in chunks if you like, or just go ahead and chop it all up. Doesn't have to be uniform. That's just me cutting like that. Doesn't have to be uniform. Here we are. Got us some nice pieces. Fabulous. Here we are. All right. So after we chop this up, we're going to mix this directly into the into the batter. There we are. 
We are all set. Have some few chunks that are big. We're going to put that right into the batter. And we are just going to stir. We're just going to mix that right in there. Yum, delish, lumpy, chunky, good fall apple dessert. All right. And while we have that waiting there for us, going to take our apple uh, crumb mixture. We're going to add in our brown sugar, our flour, there's a piece of apple in there, and our cinnamon. And we are going to add in our nice cold butter. Yep, more butter. And I'm just cutting this in chunks. And the butter needs to be cold and done quickly. And that way so you'll get your nice crumb mixture. If you don't, you're going to get, um, it's not going to be the end of the world, but uh, what you will have to do is break up your um, crumbly pieces um, as opposed to it already being crumbed. So we're going to mash this up in here to coarse crumbs. And see, this is easy peasy, easy peasy. And this is one of those recipes that when you invite someone over for tea or coffee, you take the flour, sprinkle it all over yourself, and I've been slaving all day. Yeah, it works too. Done it. <laughs> you did that for me? Yes, I suppose, you know, you could buy, it, buy an apple crumb cake, but what fun is that when you can make it yourself? A caramel apple. All right. Now you can certainly get it a little more crumbly. You do want to have some of the uh, chunks of butter because it's going to melt as it cooks. There we are right there. I simply just pull it apart, but there we are. Now I'm going to put everything on the cutting board while I move a few things. Now, I'm going to cook this in a container that I'm going to um, dispose of because I'm going to take it out because we're going to eat it right here in the studio So when it's all finished. So we have our crumb mixture, we have our caramel, and now I'm going to take an aluminum pan and I'm going to spray it generously. You don't want it to stick. So there we have that. And we're going to layer things. So let's get some of the mixture out. Don't be afraid to use your hands because I'm not. And we're going to just put that all around. And this is a very soft bread um, mix. Very quick and easy too to make. All right, now there's one layer, and I want you to see, because we're going to do it in layers. This is not all of the batter. So we have this. There we are. And next layer is going to be some of the crumb mixture. And I think under these hot lights, you know, my butter is melting quickly, but... It's all good. It's all good. All right. So we have that. And then we have caramel. Now you can make your own caramel sauce or you can buy the ones right out of the store. There we are. Nice, generous portion. Then we go back to our layering. This is going to be so good. And it's a very nice gift to, um, a th uh, item to gift to someone, you know, to take them over some nice hot apple or caramel apple bread. 
You might have a problem, though. That is that they all want it every season. You, you know, every time it's fall. Are you going to bring that over again? All right, so here we are layering again. See those nice big chunks of apple? I love that. There we are. Perfect. We'll get that out of the way. Here we are being generous again. There, isn't that beautiful? Done with that. Wipe my hands. And some caramel sauce. Now, we're going to go ahead and put this in the oven. It does need about 45 minutes to an hour to cook, so you will have to just continue to check it. If the sides start to brown before the uh, cake is finished, just take some aluminum foil, cover up the sides so that the center does rise. You will see that, but if you stick a toothpick in there and it comes out clean, it is perfect. I'm going to put that in the oven, then we are going to go ahead and get started on the meal while the bread is cooking, and that way we'll enjoy it all at the same time. We'll be right back. Well, what we're going to do first here is the macaroni and cheese has a bread crumb topping. So we're going to take our bread, we're going to put it in the food processor, crumble it all up, mix it with a little melted butter, and then we're going to put that on top of the mac and cheese, and that way we'll have this crispy, crunchy top. The texture is fabulous. So we're just going to, and you can take any bread you like. You can take sourdough. I have a wheat Italian bread right here because that's what I like. And remember, it's all about what you like. So we're just going to rip up a few pieces. Let's put that. I did that backwards. There we go. Turn on the food processor. Sometimes the bread gets stuck up in here. So you have to just push it down like I'm going to have to. There we go. That's why you tear it up so that way you don't have to worry about the big chunks. And I think that piece just is holding on for dear life. So we're going to take that piece out and put it back in later. I'm going to take this Gonna dump it in our bowl already where we have some breadcrumbs. And we'll just finish the rest. There we are. Now when I made this last week uh, at home for the second time, <laughs> uh, my kids were like, what is that? What are you putting on top? Um, because they're used to their mac and cheese not having anything but cheese on top. But this is a nice, crispy, crunchy added bonus that you're getting. Because this is going to be not only cheesy, it's going to actually have a lovely savory taste because we're going to have onions in it, um, parsley on the top um, with some scallions in it. It's going to be great. There we are, and I think that should be enough for us. So let's take this off. Yes, I think that's plenty. As my husband's Nana would say, that's a plenty. And let's add the butter. Now also to this, if you'd like, this is melted butter. This is about three tablespoons of it. And if you'd like to this, you can add salt, you can add pepper, you can add 
um, any, any herbs or spices you'd like. I'm just going to stir that up. Let me move that. I'm just going to stir this up so that there we are, as I make a mess. Now I'm just going to dig in with my hands. That way I'm sure to get them all buttered up. All right, so I think these are all nice and buttered and flavorful. So we're going to set this aside because we will use this towards the end. I'm going to move some of this out of the way and wash up my hands. All right, and we have our parsley for sprinkling on the end. Let me get this little area cleaned up for you. Isn't it nice, though, you can be in the kitchen? That's the place you want to mess up. Just mess it all up, yeah. Of course, there is the cleanup afterwards. So we're going to get this, this uh, processor out of the way, which is fabulous to move it, and then we'll continue. All right, now that we have all of that out of the way, we have some water on boiling right now. And what we're going to do, and this is completely up to you, we have the butternut squash, and it's been nice and diced up for us. Um, you can blanch the butternut squash in salted, hot boiling water, or you can roast it. Now today I'm going to go ahead and blanch it in the hot water. Um, but I did try this roasting the butternut squash, and it brought such a nice smoky uh, flavor to it, a roasted flavor, uh, nutty, brought out all the natural flavors of it that I really did like it, and that would be my preference. But it's completely up to you uh, to do it, but for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and blanch it in the hot water because uh, it takes about, oh, I'm going to say maybe about uh, 40 minutes in the oven to roast, but once you roast it, you can do anything with it. You can make a puree, you can make a soup, anything you'd like to. So we're going to add this to the water, and I'm just going to use this so I don't splash the water all over. There we are. We're going to use that same water, and we're going to put our pasta in uh, for the uh, macaroni and cheese. So um, when I take that out, I'm going to put the squash into a bowl of ice water and then we'll drain it and sit it aside. And then we're going to add our pasta and get that going. So why don't we take a little break? I'll do that. I'm sure while we're on the break, we will take that squash out. We'll already start our pasta and then we'll move right along. I'll see you in just a few moments. get in contact with me. Uh, well, you can always send me uh, something in the post um, to WinTV. Um, they'll put it in my little mailbox here. Also, you could check the website of Simply Fresh Food. Um, and there's a contact page. And you can enter in your information there. Or you can ask me a question if you'd like there. Um, so those are two of the ways you could contact me. Welcome back. We are getting ready to check on our pasta here. Make sure it is done so we can remove it from the pot. Here we are. Out. Mmm. Delish. It's ready. Mmm. You know, 
pasta is good. If you boil it with the salted water, it's just flavorful. You can just have it with just a little something. But what we're going to do is we are going to remove that. But let's get started with the um, green beans, the French style green beans. And I like to joke because the first time, and I'm just checking on, on, on my flame here, the first time I um, uh, used the French term for them, which is Harry Covert, um, my husband said, Harry who? <laughs> but um, we have uh, the French style green beans, they're just thinner than the regular uh, green beans, and they are called, as I indicated, um, Harry Covert. So we're going to put some oil in the pan. We're going to get that started. There we go. In a few moments, we're going to have people knocking down that door because that's garlic infused olive oil, and it's going to make the place smell fabulous. So we're going to put, once the oil is hot, we're going to add the uh, green beans. And I like to add... Um, celery to the green beans. Now I like to add certain food items to other food items um, and it's really just for healthy eating as well as adding an additional and different flavor. Now the celery is going to give it a little crunch. I do like that. But celery is also a flavonoid and a flavonoid in cooking is actually um, a it's something that aids the body in the resist resistance or blocking of enzymes that, um, that cancer cells form. So I am a huge fan of celery, again, a flavonoid. So add that to your diet um, because it's something that's very good for you to have. Uh, and you can add celery to just about anything. So I am cutting the celery just in the long shape of the green beans so it'd be consistent. consistent. And um, also I just actually enjoy uh, having it. So I think we are ready there. Let's add in celery. I'm going to add in the that's a lot of green beans there. Oh, and I blanched and shocked the green beans uh, earlier so that they would be nice and ready. And see, they're still firm but pliable, and they're this bright, beautiful green color, and uh, they're going to just taste fabulous. I love the bright green color. We're going to drizzle or sprinkle. A little salt. I'm going to add a little more oil to the top. And we shall start moving them around. Already smells really, really good. Now, what I'm going to do next is take the pasta out and I'm going to save just a bit of the pasta water in case we need it while I'm moving these around. Oh, aren't they just lovely? Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And we don't need these extras. So I'll put those away. Here we have another bowl. We will scoop out the pasta. And the reason I'm just going to leave the pasta right here is because I'm going to add some oil to it. There we are. It's a lot of pasta. There we are. Almost. All right, fantastic. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add 
some oil. And this is just to keep the pasta. Let me move this fork. And we will use this. This is just so that the pasta doesn't stick. We're going to put it right back over into the pot after we melt the cheese and add all the other yummies and goodies to it. So I'm doing this. And this is um, elbow pasta, but you can use rigatoni, you could use bow tie, you could use whatever pasta you'd like to with this dish. Um, I think when I made it last week, um, I used penne and it worked out beautifully, so that's great. Now, what we're going to add next, and let me check on the green bean. We're going to add next to that dish. Let me keep the spoon in here. Just a sec. These are really smelling delicious. I'm going to adjust the temperature. You see that little charring on the green beans? I hope we're getting a good shot of this. Let's turn it down a little bit. Look at that. I, I, I love, love when we get the charring on, on these. Not only does it make nice presentation, it gives it a nice flavor. All right. So I think our green beans are almost finished. Yeah. So I've turned that flame down. I'm going to add the butter to my pot. Let's make sure our temperature is on and doing well because we want to melt this butter. There we are. All right, so that's going to start melting the butter. Then we're going to add to the butter, we're going to add some onions. We're going to add, um, you add your flour at that time after you've added the onions and let them saute for a little bit. I'm going to use scallions or green onions. I've also used uh, red onions and I've used the sweet onions and I tell you they all taste good. I'm just adding the scallions today for a little color inside. But the red onions offer a very good flavor and color as well. Then we're going to melt our cheese in there with our milk. So let's check and see how we're doing there. Butter's melting nicely. I'm going to put in our first set, there we are, of scallions. Look at that. Beautiful. And the green beans are looking fabulous. Let's check on those. You know I love a sizzle, right? She's fabulous. Let's taste one. Look for a small one. Mm. Fresh is best. Eating your foods and cooking them Closest to their natural state, it's so good for you and it's good to you. So we have our butter all melted. We have our onions in there. What we would add here is our flour. Those were actually another binder I'm using. That was uh, a few of the breadcrumbs. Wow. Nice. I'm going to measure out some milk for us. And you could use 2%, you could use whole milk, um, evaporated, whatever you'd like. Mm -hmm. 
And there you have just about maybe three and a half, four cups. And I'm going to get started with melting the cheese. Now, we have a few cheeses. We have um, smoked Gruyere cheese. We have um, cheddar. And we have Swiss. Now, there is another cheese, but it's a cheese spread. It actually makes it really creamy. Feel free to add that as well. Now, this will take a little while to go ahead and melt the cheese. Um, I have the burner up so it can start melting that. We're going to then, I'm going to save the scallions and I'm going to save the parsley. Scallions and the parsley are for, um, for us for later. And I have this cheddar with um, sun-dried tomatoes and basil. That's going to be our topping for the pasta. So I'm going to get a dish because our green beans are absolutely ready. Let me pull that from here. Here, let's move that. They are beautiful, aren't they? And they are equally as tasty. Beautiful. Now, what we're going to do next is I'm going to make sure that the cheese is nice and melted. We're going to pour back in the pasta and the pasta actually will aid the cheese in melting as well as um, it will start to pick up the cheese. So we're going to go ahead and put our cheese in there. Wonderful. And we will start stirring. Now, what will happen is because the flour and or breadcrumbs, uh, whatever thickening agent you use in there, as well as the cheese, it's going to become very creamy. And that's what we're looking for. And I can see the change happening right now. Mm. These green beans and celery, they smell just fabulous. Um, you have the outdoors of the freshness and you have the flavors of, uh, or the aromas of something being smoked or charcoal. So it's very tempting to just go ahead. I'm gonna move them out of my way so that I don't eat them until it's time. All right, now I'm going to add the butternut squash. Beautiful, isn't that just beautiful? Let's get that mixed in. And now at this juncture, you can add if you need more milk. And let's get that into the pan. Beautiful. Save some of that. There we are. Let's put our breadcrumbs on top. Crispy, crunchy. That's how it's gonna come out. And now we will pop this into the oven. Oven about at, you know, um, maybe 350, 375. 
and put it in there for until it's crispy brown golden. I am preparing us for the endive and radicchio salad with walnuts and apples, as you can see. And I have here a bowl of lemon juice here. I just took the lemon that I squeezed the juice from to use for the dressing. And I, just because the lemon juice, the acid in the water will keep the apples from turning brown. So I have that because this is also part of the salad. So we have our apples ready. And I'm going to spray our hot pan already. And what's going to go into the pan is endive. And it does come endive in red as well as um, the white. And you want to just pull those apart. They'll fall apart. I'm going to put them in a bowl because we're going to oil them up before. You know what? I think I'm going to chop them just a little. Just a little. There we are. And then I'll leave a few long pieces. Now, be careful as you get closer because they could get bitter. So we're going to sit that one there. I'm going to take some radicchio. Some I've already cut up. Put that in the bowl. There we are. That part was no good. We'll take a little slice there. Oh, that's pretty. I think I'll keep it. There we are. And for color as well, we're going to take red. Let me move that. We're going to take some red bell pepper because it's beautiful. We're going to grill that as well. So we add that to the pan. And we're going to mix this up. Let me drizzle a little oil. Stir that up. There we are. Aren't those colors just beautiful? And let's see what else we need from over here. I'm going to add just a little, not a lot, just a little bit of sugar. It's going to help with caramelization of the uh, lettuces, of the greens, of the endive. And it'll also add flavor because these things, uh, the items that I've used, the radicchio and the endive, they can be really, really bitter. So I've added that sugar to sweeten them up just a little bit to make them nice and sweet. All right, so we're just going to toss those around. Now the dressing to go with this we're going to make is, um, has anchovies in it. And before you say, Ugh. Anchovies are quite tasty. Yes, they are salty, but if you like Caesar salad dressing, true, authentic Caesar salad dressing, then you like anchovies because anchovies uh, are used in making that Caesar salad. And I think I'm going to use my wooden spoon and we'll lay that there. Now, while we're waiting on that, I'm going to go ahead and mix the I'm going to go ahead and mix the dressing. Now this is the same bowl we had our other ingredients in. Here is my garlic. I believe that's just one clove. We are going to use some lemon juice, not too much. Now this is a juice of half a lemon, so I'm just going to use a little bit of that. Here is yogurt. This is almost half a cup. Remember, I want that to char over there. I want the endive and radicchio to char, but not too, too long. 
I'm gonna use my finger there to scrape all that off. All right, and here's my anchovy. Just one. And we're just gonna chop that up. Just keep removing it from the knife. And see, one is not so, so bad, but I have found what I'm going to use to sort of kind of help mellow out the dressing. Oh, I think our lettuces are ready. Let's take a look at them. Yes. Now remember, because you can eat all of these raw, you don't have to let them go forever. Oh, and they smell just beautiful. They smell Oh, wonderful. Fresh, closest to the uh, original state. And we are going to turn the burner off because we no longer need it. Let's get those on a plate. Gonna move our apples just for a little bit. All right. They smell fabulous. Oh, and remember, we have a little sugar, just a little, not even a real teaspoon. We have maybe half a teaspoon or a quarter, you know, um, just to aid in the bitterness. There we are. Okay, I have them. That is absolutely beautiful to me. Uh, we have the chopped anchovy, or I really minced it, didn't I? All right, we have that. And let's see, I'm gonna turn on the burner for our walnuts because this has walnuts in it. So we're going to actually do a honey walnut and then we're going to let them rest and add them as well. So again, we've already added our uh, juice, lemon juice, and we have our yogurt. I'm going to also add oil to this, but right now I'm just going to whisk this in just to get all of these together. Uh, and then I'm going to add some oil. beautiful and it has a nice smell to it I I don't know exactly how to describe it but it's a um, sort of like a calming you smell the yogurt and I use this is plain Greek yogurt um, because I actually I really like the taste of that um, still gonna need a little salt and a little pepper so we're going to go ahead and sprinkle in a little salt. And we shall add a little pepper. And I have the honey in front of me because I want to add a little of it. Let's do it. That will aid in also sweetening this up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put my walnuts in the pan so we'll be ready for that. Now, if you have anyone who is coming over for dinner for this fabulous meal uh, and they have nut allergies, you don't have to use the nuts. Um, and remember, because the honey was being added to the nuts, which is another um, option to kind of balance out the bitterness, of the uh, endive and radicchio, use something else that's sweet. So I would suggest I, perhaps cranberries or if you want to use some other, uh, some fruit, use that. That'd be great too. Now, the best way to taste a dressing is with what? The salad. So we're going to take one of the pieces of endive and we will go with that. No double dipping. Mm. 
I think it tastes mm, good, but more like the yogurt. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little more olive oil. There we are. And that should do it. Let's just double check. And remember also, you're going to have the sweetness of perfect, perfect. You're also going to have the sweetness of the walnut as well as apples. Now, what I'm going to do here is just add the honey. And the honey is really just to coat it. Let's do that. So I'm going to twirl them around. Let me use this. Oh, wonderful. And they smell fabulous. And it's not too, oh, wow, that's fabulous. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the, this off. And remember, because it's my smart burner, once I turn it off, it's off. Let's try one of the walnuts. Mmm. That's good. So we're going to let those sit for a while, but that's good. Um, you can use a little more honey if you'd like, or you could even substitute and use sugar. And that way when the sugar melts, you're all set. So um, those are ready. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some of the apples. Now I have here just the green apples right now, but I'm going to move the dressing aside and we're going to get some of the red. I've used a Granny Smith. You can use a Golden um, Delicious. You can use, um, you know, uh, Pippin, whatever apple you like. Here we are. I just love all the colors and the flavors of fall. And I think the crispy texture of the apple simply, again, aids in uh, making the dish just a pleasant, pleasant experience. Let's just toss those. It's going to be fabulous. And what I'll do now is add a few of the nuts. And then we'll drizzle the dressing over the, over the salad when we are ready to plate. We don't want to add it too early, so we'll take care of that. Hi, this is Chef Renee with Simply Fresh Foods, and I have a quick tip for you today. Today, I'm going to show you how to make encrusted, or I should say crispy, panko breadcrumbs with butter and sage. It's really, really easy. You're going to say, hey, I could have thought of that. Here, I have about a cup of um, panko breadcrumbs, and I like the panko because uh, they just come out so crispy and nice. So I'm going to take just a couple of servings of this clarified butter, or my liquid gold, as I like to call it. I have some fresh sage leaves here. You know, you just use what, whatever you like. And then I'm going to add some fresh ground pepper. Mmm. Always spices up things. And I'm going to use a little salt. And you just stir to mix that. Now you can also use a fork if you like. I'm just going to mix that up. It's going to come to a crumbly consistency. And then I'm just going to put it on, the, on a... Um, baking sheet, which I've lined with parchment paper. I'm going to spread that out. Here, we'll just use my hands there. And you are ready to go. There we are. We're going to put this in the oven. We're going to bake them just till they're brown, maybe about 350 if you want, 375 only takes like three to five minutes so make sure you keep your eye on it could be even sooner if your oven temperature is higher wherever your rack is placed so we're gonna put this in the oven 
be right back and show you exactly what it looks like. And we're back and look, look at this crispy, crispy, beautiful golden brown uh, texture and color and it smells delicious. Let me taste. Mmm, hear that crunch? Mmm, delicious. Perfect every time. Welcome back. And as you can see, I am beginning to dig into this delicious fall meal here. Uh, the macaroni, the butternut squash macaroni and cheese is all ready. I've sprinkled some scallions on it. Ooh, hot. I sprinkled some scallions on it and some parsley. And let's just scoop some out. Delicious. Look at that creamy, cheesy. I am tempted to take more, but I won't, I won't. All right, and going to take my wonderful green beans with celery. Look at how beautiful that is. Isn't that lovely? Oh, there we are. This is fabulous, fabulous. And let's see, I'm going to put my salad right on the same plate because um, I'm going to be eating it. And besides, I like the color. Doesn't that look fabulous? Let's get a slice of apple on there. Wonderful. And I'm going to scoop just a little of the dressing. Now what's on top of the dressing? that we've made is tarragon. And you can actually mix that right into the dressing. But I thought it's nice on top. All right, so we are ready with that. And let's do a little garnish. Here we are. All right. And I have paired this today with a nice white wine, a Chardonnay. Um, I'm gonna sample this food, so I'm ready to dig in. Very good. The crispy texture of the breadcrumbs, thumbs up, thumbs up. Delicious. Mm. This is a fabulous vegetarian meal that I think even the people who are not vegetarians would absolutely love. Let's get some of this dressing. Mm. That honey does the trick. This is delicious and the apples with it. Mm. Fabulous, fabulous. I'm gonna clean my palate. And on to the sweet stuff. Touchdown! This is fabulous. You've gotta do this. Mm. I wanna thank all of the viewers and sponsors today for the show. I want to thank you for letting me come into your home and share this passion. I hope you try these recipes. They are out of this world. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>